the Lord in the blessed sacrament. Come, let's share in the banquet of the Lord in the blessed sacrament. Eat the bread and drink the wine Flesh and blood of the Lord divine, bear his back, yours and mine, for we are one in his design. Come, let's share in the passion of the Lord, in the blessed sacrament. Let's share in the direction of the Lord in the blessed sacrament. Eat the bread and drink the wine. Bless the blood of the Lord divine. Share his life, it is yours and mine. For we are one in his design. Sisters and brothers, we begin our prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Well, good morning, St. Martin's. Happy 10th of September, St. George's, Battle of St. George's Key Day. Uh, as we celebrate this Mass this morning, uh, we give God thanks, great thanks for all the blessings that he's given our nation. Uh, and we ask him to continue to watch over us and guide us through our challenges, especially during this time of pandemic, especially those who are sick, especially those suffering from unemployment, from lack of opportunity, from lack of education, from the challenges that we continue to face. Uh, but we too give thanks for the many gifts that we have, for the ways that the Lord has blessed us with such a beautiful nation, beautiful people, beautiful Carib Sea, beautiful land of the free by the Carib Sea. We give thanks for all these gifts too. And we're offering Mass this morning for uh, Marguerite, Marguerite Gonzalez. Uh, this is the anniversary of her death? Okay. What was that? Six-year anniversary, okay. 26, 26, okay. So uh, we remember her as we pray. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come to feed us in word and in sacrament. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. God of justice, Father of all nations, who guide creation in wisdom and in goodness, to fulfillment in Christ your Son. Open our hearts to the truth of his gospel, that your peace may rule in all of our hearts and your justice guide our lives. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. To Timothy, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by command of God our Savior, and Christ Jesus our hope, to Timothy, my own true child in faith, may grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, 
who has strengthened me, that he has made me his servant and judged me faithful. I was once a blasphemer, a persecutor, a man filled with arrogance, but because I did not know what I was doing in my unbelief, I have been treated mercifully, and the grace of our Lord has been granted me in overflowing measure along with the faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to our psalm, you are, you are my inheritance, O Lord. You, you are, are my inheritance, O Lord. Keep me, O God, for, you, for in you I take refuge. I see to the Lord, my Lord are you. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. You are my inheritance, O Lord. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night, my heart exerts me. Exerts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. You are my inheritance, O Lord. You will show me the path to life, fullness of joy, joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. You are my inheritance, O Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus used images in speaking to his disciples. Can a blind man ask, act as a guide to a blind man? Will they not both fall into a ditch? A student is not above his teacher. But every student, when he has finished his studies, will be on par with his teacher. Why look at the speck in your brother's eye when you miss the plank in your own? How can you say to your brother, brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, yet fail yourself to see the plank lodged in your own? Hypocrite, remove the plank from your own eye first, then you will see clearly enough to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Sisters and brothers, this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I was celebrating this very Mass three years ago, September 10th, 2018, right? Yes. It's early, but I think I can do math. And... Uh, and I said at the Mass in my homily that, because um, I had just looked, I had just arrived in Belize, I didn't know anything about Battle of St. George's Key Day, and I said in my homily that uh, it was a small battle and the Spanish really didn't resist much, it was a pretty easy battle for the Bayman and, and the English to win, because I saw that on Wikipedia. And afterwards, Mr. Caetano, Sebastian Caetano, came up and told me that was not true at all, it was a big battle, and the Bayman were very brave, so I'm setting the record straight today, okay? A <laughs> um, few thoughts on this gospel today, sisters and brothers. The Lord says, you know, you go around pointing out the specks in your brother's eye and you don't notice the plank lodged in your own. There was a great far side a cartoon that was popular in the States for a while where there's this man who has a huge two by four beam going out of his eye and he walks around saying, sir, you have a little, you have a little uh, splinter in your eye. Let me help you get that. Not seeing at all this huge thing that was projecting to him. It kind of was a visual representation of this gospel. Uh, what would it be like if we could really see the plank coming out of our, our eye while we're going around, you know, 
picking at people and telling them, you did this, you did this, maybe you shouldn't do this. You know, the gospel really calls us to take a step back and do less of that, less of that judgmentalism and a little bit more looking at our own hearts. What are the things that we do sometimes that create disunity in the body of Christ? What are the things we do sometimes that tear our brothers and sisters down instead of building them up? <laughs> Spend a little less time doing that for one another. I remember uh, some years ago I was working in a parish and there was a woman that drove me crazy. I'm not just, it was a long time ago, far away, okay? Nowhere around St. Martin's Belize, but uh, man, it was always something with her. She had a complaint almost after every mass. And I found myself, confession, all right, nobody, seal a confession, nobody go tell this afterwards, except that it's on the live stream. Um, I found myself really judging her. I said, this is a bitter woman, she doesn't know Christ, um, she has a long way to go to enter the kingdom. And then one day, I was visiting an elderly homebound parishioner who was sick, and when I got to her house, I walked in, and there was that woman who drove me crazy, and she had just made a little breakfast for this woman. And I said, huh, all the judgments I've made about her are not the complete picture. This woman actually has a lot of generosity in her heart for someone who really needs it, you know? And I think we make those judgments all the time, so we got to be careful about that, sisters and brothers. We really do. Um, there, there's a... a, a, a I know our pastor here, and certainly our former pastor there, can, can attest that sometimes at the parish office you'll get people calling you and saying, Father, I need, we got too much, we got too much violence in this neighborhood, and the church isn't doing anything about it. Or this person, they're a Eucharistic minister, but they shouldn't be because of X, Y, and Z. Or the church isn't doing enough feeding of people in the streets, or the church isn't doing enough for our students over there to give them extracurricular activities or whatever. We get calls like this a lot. Father Brian, we don't, right? I'm making this up. Okay. <laughs> and, and when you get those calls, you always think, all right, well, well, what are these complaints about? And what are you doing to help with them? Abraham Lincoln, the great president of the United States, once said, you're only allowed to complain if you're willing to help. Right? And I think that's part of that too, part of that seeing the beam that's sometime in our eyes. If we feel ourselves starting to rail up at someone or a situation, can we change that attitude from complaining into stepping in, helping out, and doing something a little about it? You know, maybe if we're upset about the hunger in the neighborhood, then can we do like that woman did and show up and feed somebody, you know? Something to think about on this feast day and I think on this national holiday. And I think if we do that, our nation is con going to continue to be a, a more peaceful, more loving, more generous place. And it already is a beautiful nation, but it will be even more so if we commit in little ways to not worrying so much about the splinter out there and working on that beam in our own eyes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And now let's stand and offer a few prayers and petitions. On this 10th of September, let us pray for our great nation of Belize and thanksgiving for her people, for her resources, for the great many gifts that God has given her. So much beauty that surrounds us each and every day and the people in the place. And thanksgiving for this nation and that God will continue to walk with us and guide us through all of our challenges. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray for, especially during this challenging time of pandemic, let's, as the government is starting to introduce new regulations to help us get through this, let's continue to pray for wisdom and guidance for our government officials who are really trying to, to help us overcome this. Let's pray for all of our doctors and nurses on the front lines of this crisis, all those people who are stepping in and helping in various ways to help us get through this. Let's pray for the vaccination efforts, that more people will overcome their fear and be willing to get that vaccine so that we can get this finished soon enough, this pandemic. And let's pray for our students and educators 
during this challenging school year too for their perseverance and peace and for all their families that they might support them. For this we pray to the Lord. Let's pray for um, peace in our nation and throughout the world. We think of so many places that are torn by violence right now. Here in our, in our own country, households and neighborhoods where there's too much violence. Think about the murders that happened this past week where violence just takes over and the real peace and love and forgiveness of Christ that we're all called to somehow just gets put in the back seat. Pray for more peace, more understanding, more compassion and forgiveness in our nation and throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. We pray for, this is the anniversary of the 1931 hurricane and our Jesuits who are here right after mass will go out to the grave of our fallen brothers and students who died in that uh, terrible hurricane. So we pray for them, repose of their souls, pray for the repose of the souls of all who died during that hurricane, many Belizeans, uh, and for all those who are victims of natural disaster. For them we pray to the Lord. We remember Miss, uh, the repo uh, we remember Miss Margaret uh, Gonzalez for the repose of her soul and for her family who continue to mourn her passing. For this we pray to the Lord. And for any prayers you would like to add. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayer. We lift up all these prayers to you, God of goodness and great love, and the prayers that we keep in the silence of our hearts this day, praying for our nation. And we ask our good mother Mary to watch over us too and join her prayers to ours as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Sisters and brothers, let us pray together that these our offerings will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
Father, who have molded into one nation peoples drawn from many lands, grant that as the grains of wheat become one bread and the many grapes one wine, so may we before all others be, before all others be instruments of your peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God, through Christ our Lord. He spoke to us a message of peace and taught us to live as brothers and sisters. His message took form in the vision of our founding fathers, fashioning a nation where all might live as one people. His message lives on in our midst as our task for today and our promise for tomorrow. And so, with hearts full of love, we enjoin the angels today and every day of our lives to sing your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Jesus' death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of blessing, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that as we partake in the body and blood of Christ, we might be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Lawrence, our Bishop, and all your holy people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her blessed spouse Joseph, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, as one family of God, we pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that with the help of your mercy, we might be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And we ask God for the gift of peace in our world and especially in our nation. 
Lord Jesus Christ, you said your apostles, peace, peace I leave you, peace I give you. Look not on our sins, Lord, look on the faith of your church, graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And we offer each other a social distance sign of Christ's peace. Peace, sisters and brothers. Peace, Andres. Peace, Tony. And you get the host. Lamb of God. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we, called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe to eternal life. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. 
Permit me not to be separated from thee. From the wicked foe, defend me. At the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to thee, that with thy saints I might praise thee forever and ever. Amen. And let us pray. By showing us in this Eucharist, O Lord, a glimpse of the unity and joy of your people in heaven, deepen our unity and intensify our joy that all who believe in you may work together to build the city of lasting peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. And everybody have a very joyful and happy and safe holiday weekend. Together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. For there is only one God, there is only one King, and there is only one body, that is why we sing. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together in love.